Welcome to the Catholic Cafe, where Catholic truth is served fresh daily. We've made you a reservation in the luxurious corner booth, so come on in and see what's on the menu today. Now, here's your host, Deacon Jeff Drzezemski. Greetings and welcome to the Catholic Cafe. I'm Deacon Jeff, sitting in the luxurious corner booth of the Catholic Cafe, sitting here with Ziggy Rodriguez. That's me. Uh, now we are minus Tom, uh, as we all know. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody! By the way, so you, by, you know, you you've celebrated, you've had the turkey, <laughs> and many of you've, uh, you know, gone out shopping and started your uh, Christmas season, whatever. You know, that's 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 a reality that happens in a lot of homes. Uh, in fact, Tom's not here because he's just kind of recuperating after, uh, you know, his uh, Black Friday. You know, he, <laughs> he had a he had a tragic, uh, you know, there was, let's just say an encounter with some uh, lady about a $10 TV. That's all, I, that's all I can say at this point, but hopefully he'll be out of jail soon and he'll be back on the show. Uh, and we're looking forward and to let's, that. Let's all be thankful that that mall Santa Claus was there to kind of break things yes, up. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. The one that smelled of beef and cheese. <laughs> is that the one we're referring to from Elf? Um, okay, so, so we, this is going to be an interesting show today because uh, we, uh, you know, we love Thanksgiving here at the Catholic Cafe. We got specials on the menu. Yes. Right? I mean, we just, we're serving up turkey and dressing. It's the, it's the pressed turkey. You know, it's not, <laughs> not the real good stuff, but it's, it's, it's decent. Right. Uh, and, and, and we, like everyone, like to, uh, like the, the, the day of Thanksgiving, you know. Uh, I, I like to think that we haven't forgotten what Thanksgiving is. Uh, but I think it would be timely for us to do a show about uh, how people have, I guess what Thanksgiving has become, yeah, and maybe what it needs to be, and how that leads into the uh, the holidays that are that are right around the corner. Yes. Uh, well, they're actually here if you're in you know a, a, a department store or a, <laughs> right, you right, know, exactly, uh, whatever. If you're if you're shopping, then you already know that uh, starting somewhere in late September, you know, <laughs> the Christmas season has started. So uh, uh, let's let's talk about Thanksgiving uh, for a sec. I mean, I just. A lot of people have maybe, you know, we all, we all, I mean, pretty much everybody celebrates. It's, it's kind of across the board. It's, it's actually become, I'm not going to say it is or was, but it's become kind of a secular holiday, right? The entire nation kind of says, hey, it's Thanksgiving Day. Yeah. Right? And, uh, and a lot of people forget, I mean, what, we, uh, what we're doing on Thanksgiving and, and who's supposed to be thanked. Right. Like, who are we giving thanks to and for? Uh, and so maybe recuperating a little bit of that. I mean, I, I think a lot of people don't realize that Thanksgiving essentially is uh, is a religious day. Right. Right. And now, now it was never one that found its way into uh, into the church's calendar. Right. Right. So we don't look at it as, a, a, um, you know, a, an ecclesial feast day. Yeah, well, right. Not, or it's not. It's not worldwide in the USCCB. The, they have a we an, an honor it. That's yeah. right. We honor that day. Yeah, certainly, yeah. and that's that's a, a, a great thing to do. Yeah. And so I just mean it's not. It's it's a it's a local feast, yeah, right? Because yeah. others don't celebrate this day because of what it, uh, you know, what it represents. Uh, but but really, this idea that we are giving thanks is something that we've uh, that we've forgotten to do. I think. Oh sure, yeah, and it's it's it's. It's important, I think, also just for our sanity, uh, because you know, if we if we fail to recognize uh, the the things that we have and where they came from, right? And if it all is just about me, right? Every I'm the beginning and end of everything, right. et cetera, et cetera. We're never going to be uh, happy. We're never going to have a balanced view on ourselves or on the world, and uh, and pretty much everything's going to go wrong eventually, right? Because if it's all about you. And what you want? I mean, you can never have a too. You can, I've heard Matthew Kelly said this: you can never, you, you can never have enough of what you don't need. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> and so, we're, you know, if we're just stuck with us and our own insatiable appetites and no sense of uh, gratitude, then uh, we're going to really cave on, in on ourselves really quickly. So, you know, really, I think just as a matter of just practical health, uh, taking the time to. to uh, I mean, obviously, it's God that we're supposed to be giving thanks to, but at least just stepping out of ourselves is a good first right. step of uh, of recognizing that uh, you know we're not necessarily uh, deserving of the good things that come our way. That things are coming to us as gift from a place of love, and that we need to honor 
uh, the sources of that gifting and especially the source of that gifting uh, for those of us who are blessed with faith you know, and that source being God. Yeah, and I, and I also love, uh, in this particular holiday, I, I love the idea that, um, well, the connect, the connection to our, our Catholic faith, right? I, I, just the idea of the word Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. which is also um, uh, tied to our word Eucharist, mm-hmm. right? They mean the same thing. Right. Uh, and in our Eucharistic uh, banquet or our Eucharistic feast, I mean, we're essentially giving thanks for the gift of Jesus, but at the same time, we're giving Jesus, you know, as an offering to the Father. Jesus offered himself, you know, on behalf of us. And so there's just this connection to to have the, to the, the things that we have and being thankful for them and that they also bring us life. So, like, yeah, Eucharistia, right, is the right. ancient Greek that literally means Thanksgiving. So, like, we could say instead of Thanksgiving Day, it's Eucharistia Day. You could have a Eucharistia <laughs> Day. Right. I don't know if turkey would be the, 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 the chosen food on right. that day. But it is in America, and we do eat a lot of turkey. Now, uh, you know, we also have this, um, we also have this, I think we'll say a problem in, yeah. in the United States where, we, you, you mentioned, you know, giving thanks, like for the stuff that we have, and specifically giving thanks to the one that gave us the stuff that we have, right? Right. right. Uh, and and we have forgotten both of those things. Yes. I think, uh, by and large. Now, I, I think we're preaching to the choir. Sure. So anybody who's listening to the Catholic Cafe is probably a good and holy person, full of virtue, <laughs> right? And that's good. That's great. But we've got to help others to see um, maybe what they're missing on Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. Um, and so. When we look at Thanksgiving in the way that it's typically used and, and uh, or utilized or or experienced in in America, it's this this launching into full time Christmas. It's when you're yeah. when you're when you're first allowed like legally to listen to Christmas music. <laughs> right, right, right. You, but we all know we've been sneaking a few jingle bells, you know, yeah. just in the last couple of weeks. We might we might have been you know accidentally. Oh, sorry. Right. I don't know how that got on my playlist. You know, and so there, and there's nothing wrong with that little sort of taste of what's to come. Right. But I think that to some degree, when we've lost the idea of giving thanks, then this this uh, this feast day of Thanksgiving, right, ends up being like the the beginning of a uh, uh, this uh, month long indulgence. Not, yes, yes. Of not more. It's just like <laughs> yeah. it's a. Uh, you know, it becomes some kind of pagan Roman holiday, right? And, yes. we're, and we're, we're, you know, and we're, we're not doing the things that we should do. And we're like constantly feasting. And that, that right there is problematic from a church perspective because we miss the season of Advent. Yeah, I mean, Advent, just like Lent, you know, is the season of fasting before the feast. And, you know, in Lent, we have Fat Tuesday, Right, which is the little feast that we do, and it's not official. It's not on the liturgical calendar. Right? No, but you it know? is. But it is the day before. Right, Ash, Ash Wednesday, Wednesday. Right, which right. is the first day of fast. Yes. Right, and it's a very common. It's very commonly celebrated, and, and it's it's very normal in other contexts as well. If you you, you fast. Uh, of, of in addition to having a fast before the feast, uh, if it's an extended fast, having a nice feast beforehand, and so Thanksgiving can really be that for Advent. Right. So here at the Catholic Cafe, we are going to invent a new holiday. Yes. We're going. We we've named it. Yes. Right. It is now officially Fat Thursday. Yes. <laughs> so 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 Thanksgiving has become Fat Thursday. In fact, I took the opportunity. We know that Mardi Gras. You know, it's French for Fat Tuesday. Yes. Tuesday Fat, right? Yeah. Well, we're going to have Thursday Fat, so that's Jus de Gras. Jus de Gras. Yeah, Jus de Gras. <laughs> so Jus de is uh, Thursday. And, Love it. And I'm probably mispronouncing it. Sorry for all the French folks out there going like, oh. <laughs> C'est sacré bleu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, exactly. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, Jean-Pierre, or whoever is I've, I've offended. All the French know. I know, I learned from the, the chef in The Little Mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sacre bleu. Yes. Le poisson. Le poisson, le poisson. How I love le poisson. All right. So, so uh, yeah, so we have uh, Jus de Gras, right, which yes. is Fat Thursday. And now we're certainly, you know, we're making a little light of this, but there's right. an opportunity here yeah. uh, that we should use this uh, Fat Thursday. We should use Thanksgiving. Now, many people, I mean, obviously, you're listening to this. You've already celebrated Thanksgiving, sure, right? You you you've you've already had the Fat Thursday, right? But if you view it as a Fat Thursday, yeah. right? If you view it as an opportunity of opening up the door of introspection and preparation for uh, you know, which is Adventus, which which is the coming, 
Well, and think about it this way. I mean, Mardi Gras is celebrated for more than one day in New Orleans, right? Yeah. And it's Ash Wednesday where it comes to a hard stop, right? So uh, perhaps it could be you have Thanksgiving, but then once you, 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 you have your little your Fat Thursday celebration, but you, you uh, along the way, like if you're in New Orleans on like celebrating Mardi Gras, you might have shown up two weeks ahead of time and they're partying, partying, partying. And you, you're you're on the day of Mardi Gras. And that's the big day. Right. And so you would think that once it turns midnight, that the party would really get crazy because midnight's when all the party right. start going. But no, once it turns to Ash Wednesday. There is a tradition that it's Ash Wednesday now. That's right. You know, right. and you don't have Mardi Gras spilling over into Ash Wednesday. Now, of course, the secular part of that, Sam, is that they're all passed out. <laughs> you know, sure, but but at the same, but they do recognize the silence. Yes, right, the solemnity and the silence that comes on that Wednesday. Right, and so at the at the same time, like I guess what I'm saying is, if we if we're celebrating our Fat Thursday. And we're, we're having a little uh, uh, feast celebration that extends maybe a few days. But then when we're thinking at the same time, okay, first Sunday of Advent's coming up. I'm feasting right now, but what am I going to do to prepare for the coming of the Lord? Yeah. And what am I, what am I going to, what commitments am I going to make once this first Sunday of Advent comes so that I know that that next Monday, boom, I'm in and I'm all in. Yes, and, and so we should. Now, I will say that maybe uh, our, our Fat Thursday kind of extends a little bit. Um, and, you know, there's like in Holy Week, there's, a, there's Good Friday. Yeah. But we have Black Friday. But Black <laughs> Friday, we'll, we'll call it Not So Good Friday. <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's yeah, yeah, again, all kidding aside, you know, it, it, it's another time where all of a sudden we are putting on ugly sweaters and we're going shopping. You know, yeah. and we're thrusting ourselves into commercialism. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now that I'm not gonna be one of those naysayers that say you should not do any of that or participate in any of that. But we do need to recognize it. Let's say that as that Thanksgiving weekend with family, you, you usually are either visiting or you have visitors or people have gathered at your house. And that usually doesn't stop at least until maybe that Sunday when people either depart, go home, or in, in what, depending on the calendar, maybe that's the first Sunday of Advent, yeah. right? You start to, and, and you start to have an opportunity then to turn Fat Thursday into a preparation for that which is going to be more solemn, you know, as, as you mentioned, a preparation for the coming of our Lord. Um, let's talk a little bit about the character of Advent. Maybe what we're missing, yeah. uh, so many of us miss in Advent, is we see it, and I, we've done a couple of shows on Advent, Yeah. Uh, and I, th I think they were pretty good, you know? Yeah. And we talked about different aspects. One of those things we mentioned was this idea that, that it's okay to step into Christmas, right? It's okay to, like, as Advent progresses, to maybe on certain uh, Sundays of Advent or on certain days of Advent, you start to introduce more of the, you, you're preparing for the feast. Right. Right. So if you're going to cook a big dinner, right. you have all the guests coming over, right? You get the big, you get all the tables like pushed together and tablecloths kind of draping right. off everywhere. You have, you, you have seating for 32 people or whatever in your house. You, you don't just wait till they show up and then start cooking. Well, it, it, right. You've got to prepare for that feast. Well, and also in addition to that, like, let's just say you, an angel comes to you. And that angel says, uh, they give you the exact day, let's say about a month from now, that our Lord is going to personally come and visit you. Would you just say, uh, okay. No. 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 You no, now, prepare. You now, know? men <laughs> might do that. <laughs> right. But there are certain people <laughs> that we're like, we got to start cleaning. Right, right, right. You know, we need to repaint that front room. Right. Before they get here. <laughs> you know? But we also have to prepare interiorly, right? Yes, we, we know that, and all kidding aside, that if we knew the day and the hour, right, right we would we we'd tell ourselves we'd be prepared. I, I think the Lord knows us better than that, knows that we would still squander that time of preparation. But we do need to do our best to try and recognize Advent as this season of opportunity, right? Yeah. Uh, um, you know, you mentioned it's uh, it's like Lent. And there are likenesses to Lent. It has a different character, I think. It's a different color of purple. Yeah. Right? So the, the purple of Advent, if you, if you know liturgical colors, you know the actual purple the traditionally of Advent is a more bluish colored purple. Yeah. And then the Advent uh, or the Lenten purple is a more um, reddish color of purple. And there is actually a, a, t a, a difference. Now, right. you don't often see that in, you know, churches can't always afford to buy uh, I've got 16 shades of purple. You know, we're right. a really good holy Catholic church. Uh, but, there, but there is a difference in the character. One 
uh, we'll just say that um, uh, Lent is a time in the desert. Yeah. Right? Where where I, I see Advent more as a time of introspection and preparation. Yeah. And there is a, a, a sense of self-mastery. Yes. Right? And that's where it is still, it is a penitential season of sorts. Right? It is. It's not the same character as Lent. But it is an opportunity for us to prepare ourselves uh, in, in temperance, in modesty, in, in trying to help ourselves see that we are, can be masters of the elements, where we can masters of our own domain, right, so that we can prepare ourselves. Yeah. Well, I, well, I think for me with, with Lent, you know, on one hand, because you're, you're, you're building up to uh, Holy Week, to Good Friday, and, 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 and the... Uh, an Easter day, yes. You know, for me, it's like what part of me needs to die in order to to be resurrected anew in Christ, yeah. right? But you're We're, very holy. <laughs> well, right. all of us have no, no. no but all that's of us have things thing that we need to to, yes. to die to, yes. you know, in order to be resurrected, right? And then, and then, um, with with uh, Christmas, here's how. Here's here's basically my my take on Advent and my the way I'm, I process it. It's more going back to that analogy of you're welcoming our Lord into the house. If you're welcoming our Lord in the house, let's use let's use that the house sort of as a symbol of our soul, like you were doing earlier, right? Uh, yeah. Which is which is to say, like, are there first of all for those of us here in Catholic Cafe, are there rooms in the house where you would want shut off, where you're like, I don't think I'd want to welcome him into that room. Yeah, you no, know, because those are the rooms where you've actually shoved all your stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's it's ugly in there. Right, right. And you so know, if it hasn't been dusted in a while, it's yeah. pretty nasty. And so making finding those places to say I'm going to use Advent to really focus and on and and, and and you know fasting and prayer is a great way to focus in on on healing and growing in those in those key growth areas, right? Um, but then. Some of us here at Catholic Cafe might be listening and be like, um, I don't have any space I feel comfortable wel- welcoming them into. Yeah. I don't even feel comfortable welcoming them into my front door. And if that's the case, like, guess what? First of all, he still wants to come to you. Yes. And there is time. You know what I mean? And, and he wants to come to you no matter what. But if you have that sense that you have a lot of work to do, well, guess what? You don't have to get every room clean. But focusing on that one space to welcome him in um, that can make a huge difference for you to really fully receive him on Christmas Day by preparing yourself to receive him. Because, you know, there, he, our Lord desires to give himself to us. The, the, big, the problem in the world is not God failing to give himself to the world. He is constantly giving himself yeah. to the world in, in, in the fullness of his infinitude. The problem is our failure to receive him. Yeah. And, our, and receive ourselves in him. And, so, and, and that may yeah. be because we've, we've, we've gotten so caught up in the secular aspects of some of these things yeah. and indulgence, and we end up just having a month of celebration yes. right in preparation for Christmas, which, you know, in all honesty, that to me like takes away some of the, the beauty of the Christmas day and, and the Christmas season. Oh, yeah. A lot of people don't recognize, and you know, we mention it all the time whenever we do a show like this, We'll talk about the fact that, like, the 12 days of Christmas start on Christmas Day. Yeah. They don't start 12 days before Christmas. Yeah. Right? And we so often think that way, and we, we want to cram all the preparation and all the fun and all the excitement, and then all of a sudden Christmas gets here, and the tree is kicked to the curb. Yeah. Right? Really quickly. Right. And the Feast of St. Stephen, I'll often tell you. Know, and, and, you know, Christmas is a great opportunity to be lazy. Christmas is a great opportunity to leave your tree up forever. <laughs> <laughs> You know, to the baptism of the Lord, you yeah. know, just just keep that tree up there, maybe for t- to Candlemas, right? Right? You know, to into February. I, I'm just saying, it's an opportunity. We should be celebrating the the birth of our Lord, and we do this every year to be, remind us of the great gift that's been given to us, right? And we're called into that. But I will say again, uh, you mentioned where there might be people who don't feel worthy, yeah, and they don't think they're ready to welcome any guest let alone the lord yeah um and you i love the analogy of saying there's rooms where we don't no one's welcome into that room and that's we just got that one walled off and and maybe except for me i go there sit and sulk in it you know i don't i I feel bad um but again if we just if we just look at this uh, advent as an opportunity of preparation right to prepare ourselves then let's just do this like one room at a time. Let's just yeah. just pick something that's doable, right, in your life that you can sort of address and focus on in the same way that you just parallel it to getting ready for Christmas. Yeah. Right? Maybe one week you're going to put up the tree, 
right? Just to get ready. You're going to get the tree up. Maybe you don't put the lights on it, or, or maybe you just put the lights and you don't put on ornaments. And then maybe the next week you're adding a few things. Maybe you're playing a little more music. Maybe you go ahead on that on, on the second or third Sunday of Advent. You may just like have some nice baked goods that, you know, have smell like cinnamon. And, you know, just there are things that like where you step into Christmas, mm-hmm. right? Where, you, where you're, you're, you're sort of uh, teasing Christmas, as it were, right? Yeah. You a little foretaste of the joy that you're going to experience. Well, in the same way, maybe by opening up some of these unwelcome areas in our lives yeah. that we then we're welcoming the Lord sort of one by one into each one of these rooms. Yeah. And pretty soon you're going to look around and go like, oh, wait, the whole house is open now. Mm-hmm. My whole spiritual house is now open to the Lord. And what a day of glory that will be. Well, and some people might be listening to this and say, you guys, I can't, you don't get it. You don't get how stressful Christmas is for me. I've oh, got yeah. kids. I've got uh, all this. These the, I don't know how I'm going to afford Christmas. I'm supposed to buy all this stuff. I spent this much money last year and the year before, and and maybe I've lost my job. Or there's some economic pressures or inflation or all this other yeah. stuff, and people are just feeling crushed and saying, "I don't know how I can even make Christmas happen." And 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 you're telling me now I have to. Uh, worry about all this other spiritual preparation it's like well you know what that probably is a good place to start yeah because at the end of the day that may be one of the rooms that might be one of the rooms because christmas is not about you know if it's all of us and myself included okay i'm speaking to myself here it's easy for us to kind of uh let christmas be defined by especially for gift givers and we like giving gifts. What, what did you get me this year? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but if we if we're Christmas if we if we like giving gifts uh, and we like seeing the joy in people's faces, but but it becomes still stressful when we're like, oh, I have to up myself. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. or I have to like maintain even if I don't Man, have that, that, that money. That thing I gave last year was so cool and everybody loved it. And it was the cool. It was the talk of the of of of, of present opening. You know, right. it was like it was the it was the big thing. What am I going to do this year to either top that or at least you know, I can't just phone it in. Right. Well, in the same we stress over that stuff. We do. And here's the thing. At the end of the day, um, being grounded in the fact that our Lord, he's making a free gift of himself and we're supposed to receive him as him, not for the things he may give us or not give us, but because he's worthy yeah. of our love. Worthy is the lamb. Right. And, and, and in the same way, he desires to transform our hearts and allow us to make a gift of ourselves to one another. And that should be the greater gift that we're giving, not not the things that we're putting in boxes and with and wrapping in paper and stuff like that. And you know what? In the same way that a lot of times we don't receive the free gift of our Lord and we say, yeah, but what did you give me? You know what I mean? And we've yeah. been un- ungrateful. I, it could be that there are people who are going to likewise be ungrateful to us if we say, well, I'm going to just focus on making a gift to myself and people don't see the gift and they don't recognize it. Guess what? You can still unite that suffering to our Lord because we ourselves have brought that suffering in our Lord uh, upon our Lord by failing to recognize that he is our provision. He himself is the gift. And and so I think if we just allow ourselves ourselves to stop and rest and re- and focus on receiving him and receiving ourselves in him and making a gift of ourselves to one another in him and saying, you know what, that's how I'm going to prepare for this Christmas. And it's not going to be about money. And I'm going to just trust that God's provision is perfect. And if people don't appreciate it, that's their problem, not mine. Well, that sounds like you have, you're going to have like a really joyous Christmas day. You're going to make everybody <laughs> mad. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, you, you, you got excited there here's for a second. Friendship, here's some friendship places. <laughs> I hate inflation. No, <laughs> I, but I, I think what you can do is yeah. you, can, you can continue the gift giving. Right. Right? Don't freak out and stress over it. Don't. Um, and let them be like a gift you chose for somebody because like, hey, look, I know you like this or you're this kind of person or this is how I see you. And here's here's this gift that reflects that gift giving is a it's a beautiful charism that Pray, many yeah. people have. Pray about it. See what but, God tells. You. That's right. And we if, if but if we connect that, like you said, to the gift that Jesus gave us. Yeah. And then realizing that we, too, can be a gift like to others yeah that that part is really important yeah and so that people don't like you don't forget you know and how many times you've seen the little all the cute uh little sayings that come out at christmas like the little ornaments that say wise men still seek him right you know and uh, jesus is the reason for the season these but but there's truth there right and so we need we need to like uh if we've lost that I imagine that's why we're so stressed about the gift giving and why we're so stressed about the spending of the money. 
And you know what? So don't spend as much money. Right. You know, and there's, there's a truth to, uh, to weaning that, that gift, that gift giving. Right. Like where the, the expectations, like, well, you, I, I still remember Harry Potter on this, uh, you know, what's his name? Uh, the Dursley's kid, uh, Dudley or whatever his name was, you know, he, uh, you know, uh, and he, he counted his birthday presents. And yeah. It's like there's 37. Last year I had 38. You know, and, <laughs> and he was very upset. You know, and and there, to some degree, uh, they they there needs to be a weaning. Yeah. From the from the secular, um, you know, uh, just just the idea that like we have to have more stuff. Right. It doesn't mean that the stuff is bad. It just means that we've like replaced Jesus with the stuff. Yes. And we can't do that. There needs to be a, a, at least a parallel. Yes. Between the things that we give and receive and those all hearkening us or focusing us or, or, or taking our hearts to the greatest gift that was ever given. Mm-hmm. Right. And when we can do that, that's when all of a sudden Christmas is going to mean something more to us and then we'll recapture something. And this is something we can do during Advent. So all of you have celebrated your Fat Thursday, even if you didn't think of it as Fat Thursday when you were there on Thanksgiving dinner, you know, eating all that stuff and celebrating you with your family. The, the reality is you can sort of say, like, look back at those last couple of days and go like, you know what? OK, Fat Thursday. I am now going to prepare myself. Right. So jus de gras is done. Yeah. And we're now in this season of preparation. And let us be prepared for the Lord. And let us hearken to the words of Mary who leads us to her mm-hmm. son. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour, hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to The Catholic Cafe. If you'd like to contact Deacon Jeff, send him an email at deaconjeff at thecatholiccafe.com. Visit us on the web at thecatholiccafe.com. You can also find us on iTunes or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. The Catholic Cafe is brought to you by the Order of Malta Federal Association. Join us again at the Catholic Cafe, serving up salvation one cup of coffee at a time.